Hi guys, welcome. Come on in. Come on in and get comfy. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages, coming at you live from the Dallas, Texas area tonight. And let me know in the comments below where you're coming from tonight. So go ahead and leave a comment and let me know where you're coming from. I'm super excited to be here tonight to talk to you about one of my favorite listening games for kids. So if you have kids who need help listening, little kids, um, preschool, kindergarten kids, this is a very fun, simple game that you can play with them. Hey, Mary, welcome. Mary from the Teaching Tribe is here in the house. Yay! And also, if you're just joining us, hey, Sandra from Canada is here. If you're just joining us, go ahead and let us know in the comments below if you are going back to school tomorrow, you or your kids, um, because I sent out an email earlier today to all my subscribers and so many came back with autoresponders that they were out until tomorrow. So tomorrow's a big day for a lot of you here in the States, a lot of us go back to school. Um, hey, Jackie from Bolivia, welcome. Jennifer from the Teaching Tribe is here. Lori from Florida Teaching Tribe is here. Tamika, wow, we have a lot of Teaching Tribe members in the house, wonderful. Ooh, someone's off till the night, the gay for you. Um, <laughs> so some of you may have received a text message tonight letting you know that I was going to be here on Facebook Live along with the topic we were going to cover. And if you didn't get the text message and you would like to get it, um, it's free. If you're in the States, go ahead and text this number put this in the message box and Tom will give some further instructions for you below. Um, if you're out of the US, you can sign up uh, through email. Um, yes, wonderful. Leah from Florida is here is from Florida is here too. Teacher work day today. Kids start tomorrow. Yes, there was a lot of that going on today. So anyway, if you didn't get a text message and you would like to know about the topic that we'll be talking about every Monday and Wednesday here on the Pre-K Pages Facebook Live show, then go ahead and sign up for text messaging. That way you will know when I'm going to be live and what the topic will be. Hey, April's here. So I see a lot of Teaching Tribe members in the house tonight. The Teaching Tribe is my premium membership site for teachers just like you, teachers of preschool, pre-K, kindergarten, Head Start, in-home childcare, faith-based programs, and more. And over in the Teaching Tribe, members have access to every single paid printable from Pre-K Pages. So that's a $740 or $50 value. I added a bunch of new products products lately, so I can't remember exact, the exact number, but they have access to all of those paid products at their fingertips 24-7. In addition to all the wonderful printables, they also have a supportive community of new and veteran teachers, a safe haven for asking and answering questions, and we also have fun things going on over in the Teaching Tribe, like we started our 2017 Winter Book Study today. So we have a lot of folks over in the Tribe super excited about our book study. We will be reading Matt Glover's and Kathy Collins' I Am Reading. So Teaching Tribe members are super excited about that. We've got our Teaching Tribe exclusive t-shirts. We've got our Tribe Buddy program. Thank you to my Teaching Tribe Buddy. I had some wonderful gifts. Thank you so much. It was so fun to get things in the mail from my Tribe Buddy. And then we also, of course, have two uh, webinar trainings uh, per month. Each one comes with a certificate of attendance for one hour. So lots of great stuff happening over in the Tribe. Happy New Year here guys yay welcome um, so tonight I wanted to go ahead and share with you just because I know a lot of you are going back to the classroom tomorrow first of all I want to let you know that you've got this okay it's it can be tough going back after a long break probably the longest break you'll have during the school year can be very tough when you work with little children because they have been at home, they've been on a different schedule, they've had different rules, um, their sleep schedule is off, their eating schedule is off. Um, everything about their routine is changed 
And so when they come to school tomorrow, just know in your heart that you've got this because you did the first day of school. The first day back after a long break is often a lot like the first day of school. If you could get through the first day of school, you can get through tomorrow too. So what you're gonna have to do is, is go back and backtrack quite a lot. They're gonna need a lot of reminders. They're gonna need more. Um, encouragement to go to the bathroom and drink water. Um, they're not going to be used to the routine. You're going to want to reinforce those procedures and those routines um, and just go with the flow. There might be some crying. Um, there might be some kids who don't feel well. They've been exposed to a lot of germs um, by visiting all the relatives and friends and family and stuff. And uh, quite often kids get sick at the end of vacation. And as a teacher too, I would often get sick like the day before we came back from a vacation. Um, and I don't know if it was this, the holidays can sometimes be more stressful um, than any than the regular routine that we have. Hey, Michelle, welcome. So just know that everything is going to be okay. You've got this. If you did the first day, you can do tomorrow. And you might also have some new students. And so welcome them with open arms. I know um, in the neighborhood I live in, they're still building houses, but we had a lot of people move in over Christmas. It was surprising to me, but that makes sense because they had a nice break and they could move the kids in and that would be a nice transition. So you might have some new kids tomorrow. Welcome them with open arms and um, Pretend like it's the first day of school all over again and you can handle it. Pamela says she has two new students. Hey, welcome guys. All right, if you know anybody who's going back to school tomorrow, if you know any teachers whose kids might um, be able to use some uh, a fun listening game, practice the listening skills, go ahead and tap the screen, uh, tag them in the comments, share whatever you want. Um, <laughs> Susan says she's not looking forward to tomorrow. I know it's hard to go back. Um, I sent out an email earlier today about how hard it is to go back after a break. And I know it's very, very tough. We are, as teachers, have been out of our routine. So it's hard for us too. So it's going to be a rocky start for everybody. Just don't, yeah, just kind of take it slow, follow the kids lead and um, you will be good to go. So here are some activities. I also got into my book stash. Um, I, every time I do like book recommendations on Facebook Live, I say, I'm just gonna pull out a couple of books before I share my activity. And then I open my book storage closet and I take out like 20 books. <laughs> And that's like a two hour broadcast. I can't narrow it down, you guys. I have so many favorite books. So I, I picked out my top five out of my gigantic stack. So I'm gonna start with the basics. Um, so if you need a book to read aloud tomorrow, this is one a lot of you probably already have in your stash, The Snowy Day. And a lot of you may have watched the video on Amazon Prime over the holiday break or in your classroom before the break. Um, so The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats is a classic, a timeless classic. Um, don't let the publication date turn you off. This is a book that will live on forever. It's, it's the greatest book. My kids have um, always come up with some of the most higher level thinking skills um, things when we read this story because the snowball melts in his pocket, you know, and we predict what's going to happen to the snowball. Why did it happen? It leads to great discussion vocabulary, um, science experiments. It's just a really great, well-crafted story. Um, it's gonna live on forever. Obviously, it's a Caldecott winner. Um, you can't go wrong with The Snowy Day. Um, so, Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. Read that tomorrow. You will be good to go. Um, the other one is the mitten. I wouldn't lead with this tomorrow if you're just going back after break. Um, I like to work work up to this one. This is an awesome story. Anything by Jan Brett is always fantastic because she's such an amazing illustrator and storyteller. Um, but the pictures on here are a lot um, and sometimes you have to um, 
modify just a little bit. So I would work my way back up to this one. There's a lot going on on each page and the kids have to be really, really um, attentive and look for the clues. So I like to read this one over several days. So we'll read it the first time and then we'll go back and we will um, look at the different things that we might not have noticed I might call their attention to. I can usually read this book for a, a couple of days. Um, Hey, Cindy from San Antonio, welcome. Yay. Um, so The Mitten by Jan Brett. This is a must read. It's a must read. Every teacher probably has a copy in their uh, book closet somewhere. So Ezra Jack Keats, The Snowy Day, and The Mitten by Jan Brett, two of my absolute top must have reads for the winter. The Hat is another good one as well. Um, Oh, here's another Jan Brett book. Surprise! <laughs> She's fabulous. I love to read the story of the three little bears um, uh, in the winter because you know, it talks about bears, uh, but it's also a great fairy tale. I mean, there's so much learning packed into that as well. But this is Jan Brett's story of the three snow bears. So it parallels the story of the three little bears, uh, Goldilocks and the three bears. And we like to do a whole unit study on Goldilocks and the three bears. And Tom, I forgot to give you a link to that, but there is a bundle, uh, Goldilocks and the three bears bundle over in the store if you wanna put a link there to that. Um, but this is a great book to read if you're doing a unit study on Goldilocks and the Three Bears because you can compare and contrast um, all of the different versions. And this is a really cool version because it's kind of like um, the Alaskan version or the Inuit version. Um, and of course it has the wonderful um, Jan Brett illustrations with the pictures hidden and the predictions going on. Um, so this is a great book to compare and contrast to the classic story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So there's this circle time activities, Erin, are going to, I think it was Erin, are going to be in the uh, bundle that Tom is going to post below. I have literacy and math activities for Goldilocks and the Three Bears as well as um, a complete center lesson plan included in that bundle as well. So all of that stuff is going to be in there. Hey, Sofiana from Eagle Pass, welcome. So those are three books. I told you I picked my top five. Okay, Snowman's Story. This was one of those scholastic finds a couple of years ago, and I found it and I just fell in love with it because it's a wordless picture book. And I am all about the wordless picture books at the early childhood level. You can read my post about it. I have a post over at Pre-K Pages titled Wordless Picture Books, and it's all about the benefits and how wordless picture books are super important for our youngest emergent readers so that they can develop storytelling skills. Um, hey, Verdiana from Monterey, welcome. Um, so it's called Snowman's Story by Will Hillenbrand. Will Hillenbrand, and it is a super sweet story. It is a wordless picture book, and it's really hard to find really good wordless picture books for the early childhood classroom. So what we're doing here with this book is getting kids to um, retell the story um, without actually reading the words, but using the picture cues, which is a, a part of emergent reading. Um, yes, I love them too, Margie. And of course, Snowman at Night by Carolyn Buner. And there's a series of these. I love these. The illustrations are absolutely amazing. Um, Erin, you don't need to write them down. I think there is a blog post over at Pre-K Pages, Tom will drop a link to, that has all of these books that I'm talking about and more um, for winter listed in the blog post. So, um, Snowman at Night by Carolyn Buner. Beautiful illustrations. Her, her illustrations are absolutely, they're full bleed, they're gorgeous, and it's all about what snowman what do snowmen and snow women really do at night when we go to sleep? So it's kind of a fantasy about what they might be doing. And kids just love it because then you can ask them what their snowman does at night and then you can make a class book. Fabulous stuff. 
Okay, those are my top five picks. All right, so we're gonna get into the snowman listening game. So if your kids need a little help listening when you go back to school tomorrow after break, this is a really fun game. So it's based on, and there's a blog post that goes with this, so if you would like to visit the blog post to read more about it and get the printable, because there's a free printable that goes with this, right? You know I'm all about my free printables. So Tom will drop a link to the free printable called the Snowman Listening Game in the comments. And um, if you've ever played Simon Says with your kids, whether at home or at school, tap the screen and let me know. Um, I love Simon Says in the classroom because it promotes self-regulation skills or listening skills, okay? So when you're playing Simon Says, think about it. Simon Says, and now the kids have to wait, right? You have to wait, you have to listen, you have to be still almost to comprehend the word. Simon Says, jump up and down. And then they jump up and down. But there's always a few kids, right, who never listen for the Simon Says, and they just do whatever the person in front says to do. So it's a fun game to play with them. You don't need to have anything. You can play it without anything. But what I did was, I like to play this game all the time, but it can get old. So what I did was I created them for different times of the year, different themes, whatever. So this one is Snowman Says. And Snowman Says comes with this free printable. You can print it out and there are, um, I think nine different cards. Of course, I only used six in here, but um, you decide which ones you wanna use. I put them in this cube, okay? This is a cube that I got from Amazon or teacher store or something. Tom will drop a link if you wanna see what it looks like or what brand it is um, so that you can find one of your own. But um, these are awesome, they're soft. I've been hitting the head with them many times <laughs> and they're soft so they don't hurt. So you can put the cards from this printable in here or you can just cut them up and put them in a bag, like a brown paper bag, or a black top hat if you want to get really fun um, because snowmen wear black top hats. Um, and then the kids can close their eyes and pick out a card. So what happens is you pick somebody in your class to stand up in front. Now you're going to have to model this several times before you let them do it so they get it. But then you pick somebody, they come up and they take a card and pull it out or they roll the cube so they can roll the cube. And there goes the cube. <laughs> and um, whatever it says on top of the cube, that's okay because I have the cards right here too. I knew that would happen. I'm not very good with my motor skills. <laughs> and so when they roll it, hey Nancy's here. Um, when they roll it, like this one says smile. So there's a picture and the word, so they don't need to read. This one says smile. So the child who pulls it would say, would say snowman says smile. And then everyone can smile. And then the child can put the card back or roll the cube again. And this one is Simon says, or Snowman says, touch your buttons, because snowmen have buttons, right? Um, so they're just really cute snowman directions here. This one says, touch your scarf. So do you see how this is great vocabulary too? So I love this game because kids are practicing receptive language the listening part of language, right? They have to listen to the words and then they have to interpret that in their head and then produce the motion. So that's great. Um, so kids are practicing receptive language. The, the children who take turns being the snowman are practicing re, uh, expressive language because they're speaking. I encourage full sentences. So I like them to say, you know, snowman says, touch your scarf. It's great for second language learners because it builds vocabulary and they're motivated to participate because they all want to um, participate in this really fun snowman listening game. So all the cards 
are there at the Snowman Listening Game link for you, right? And you can print them out for free. And then you can play this game either at home or in the classroom tomorrow when you and your kids go back to school. And the great thing about this is I can change it up. I have one for Santa that I did at Christmas time. So it was Santa says, right? And then you can change it up to something else in the fall and in the, um, in, in, uh, the different seasons, spring or whatever. Um, and of course, playing the regular Simon Says is always fun too. But what I find with little kids, when you play Simon Says, so the reason I created these cards, when you play Simon Says with little kids, having them think of what they should do without picture prompts is really, 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 really hard, like almost impossible. So if you want them to play Simon Says and you don't have picture prompts, it's very difficult for them to come up with something that is actually doable. They'll say, they'll say things like, Simon Says, go ask your mommy for a cookie. <laughs> you know, like, what? You can't do that. So <laughs> they, say, they say really silly things. They can't, they don't get it. So the picture prompts really help them understand the game. And once they've done it um, several times and they've played it as a group, then you've modeled it for them. Once they've done that, they kind of get it a lot better. And if your kids are too young for this, you can just be the snowman. You will be the snowman. Snowman says, clap your mittens. Or you could even make an academic and say, snowman says, clap your mittens two times. One, two. Um, so snowman says, super fun, very simple um, listening game for your little ones to start off your new year right in your classroom. So if you want to... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to catch up on comments here because they're coming fast and furious. So if you want to reinforce some listening skills in your kids when they come back from the long break tomorrow, if you're indeed going back, then you will want to play a game like this. And it's so simple. You don't need the cards, but they are free printable over at Pre-K Pages if you would like to have them. So let me catch up on comments. I see that we have... You don't need the oh. cards, but they are free printable over at Pre-K Pages if you would like to have them. <laughs> so let me catch up on comments. I see that we have... <laughs> oh, I did this last time too. <laughs> I'm trying to read comments on my um, iPad and then the sound comes on and I have to, while all uh, 212 of you are watching me, I have to figure out how to turn off the sound. So <laughs> it's always great on live, isn't it? Um, Pearl says, I can't wait to play. Thank you. You are very welcome, Pearl. So um, let me see if I can turn off. Last time I did this, somebody in the group was like, just turn the volume down, Vanessa. I'm like, it's easier said than done. <laughs> because all these people are looking at you, right? Okay. So, um, why? Said than done. No. Because it won't work. <laughs> I turned off the volume on the iPad, I swear I did, and it keeps coming back on. Okay, Nell is here. Let me move this a little closer. There we go. And I will see if I can come on this way. Hey, from Alabama. Hi, Sarah. Thank you, Vanessa. There's so many people named Vanessa these days. You know, I used to be the only person named Vanessa. And my name was never like on all that stuff that had people's names on it. And now like everyone's named Vanessa. And I'm like, but I was Vanessa before everyone else was. Um, let's see. Melissa says she can't wait to use it. Hi, Jessica. Welcome. I'm glad that you are here. She says she's new. Pearl, uh, Myra. Hi, Myra. Here's someone from Brazil. We usually get a lot of viewers from Brazil, so it must be a good time for them um, there because we get a lot of teachers from Brazil. So hi there from Brazil. I can't say your name. Usually I don't get stumped too badly on names, but I don't know that one. <laughs> um, Mary says this is gonna be awesome. Erica says she loves this idea. Vanessa says she loves this for her English language learners. 
Would this be suitable for toddlers? That's really going to depend, Erin, on your toddler um, or your toddlers if you're in a, in a classroom. So you're going to have to figure out if this is something they can do. Like if you did it the simple way where you were the snowman and you did it like snowman says, clap your mittens two times, one, two, they might. It depends. So you're going to have to try it out. I wouldn't give them the cards. You probably won't need the printable for it, um, but you could try it teacher led. Jennifer's going to play this game. Oh, thank you for sharing, guys. I appreciate that. Wonderful. Serena's here. Serena from the Teaching Tribe. Yay. Wonderful. Oh, Jamaica is here. Vanessa's from Jamaica. Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I'm glad you're learning so much. Hey, guys. So, um, so that's what you're going to do. You've got this. You can go back to school tomorrow as long as you know that everything is going to be okay. You did the first day of school. You can do the first day back from vacation too. Just take it slow. Uh, review those procedures and routines and um, just, just follow the kid's lead. So you might have some crying. You might have some things going on that you're not thrilled about, but that's okay. They just need to get back into the routine. So, and be aware of those kids who um, are tired and maybe hungry because their sleep and their eating schedules are different when they're on vacation. So they might be hungry, they might be sleepy. Have your um, sensory bottles ready, have your self-regulation station ready, have your patients ready, eat your Wheaties, um, take your vitamins, you can do it. And um, grab a free copy of the snowman listening game so you can play that in your classroom with your kids if you have any friends or teachers you think might like the snowman listening game go ahead and share this broadcast with them and um, i will be back on wednesday night we have a live broadcast every monday and wednesday night at 7 central 8 eastern and it is a new year and a new month and a new season so we will have um upcoming this month we will have our monthly question and answer session where you can submit questions and i will answer them live on the air questions about teaching preschool pre-k or kindergarten and we will also have an activities broadcast, a winter activities broadcast, where I will share some activities that you can do at home or in the classroom with your preschoolers, your pre-K kiddos. Um, we will have probably going to do a, one about fairy tales because I love, love, love my fairy tales. <laughs> and we will be doing um, all kinds of fun stuff this month. I have lots of stuff going on for you. So make sure you tune in every Monday and Wednesday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. And we will be here talking about your favorite early childhood topics. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight and thanks all for your comments and your tapping on the screen and all of that good stuff that you do. I want, I, I want to thank you all uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, 2017 is going to be a great year and there's lots of great things in store at Pre-K Pages and in the Teaching Tribe. So I will see you all Wednesday. Good luck if you're going back to your classroom tomorrow. You got this. Bye guys.